Again, hello. Thank you for joining our independent study informational webinar. I am Isaac Burgess, director of the Malibu Schools Pathway and administrator overseeing our district independent study program. I want to acknowledge and thank all of our amazing independent study teachers. And this evening we have with us our elementary teachers who will be making a presentation to you. Also, I'd like to thank our interpreter as well. Our outcomes for our webinar are twofold. To share with you an overview of what you and your student can expect from our elementary teachers regarding our K through five independent study program, as well as answer any questions that you may have regarding the overall K through 12 independent study program, which includes our middle and high school students as well that are in the program since receiving the enrollment forms form as well as the frequently asked questions or the FAQ. At this time, our panelists will introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Cullen. Nancy Levy. I'm Erin Handel. And I'm Jill Matthews. I would just like to remind you that any questions that you have this evening, please type them into the chat and we will respond to your questions at the end of the presentation. At this point, we will go ahead and start our presentation. Thank you, Mr. Burgess and welcome everyone. Uh, we are really excited this evening to be sharing our program and we're even more thrilled that our district is again offering this unique opportunity for the 2022-23 school year. So we also have some purposes this evening, which you heard Mr. Burgess talk about. We wanna share with you the work that we've done this year with our current ISP students. Um, and in doing so, we hope that you really get a sense of what is it like for a student in independent study. And we also hope that you walk away with a new perspective on independent study. Realize it, that it's different than maybe what you and your child had experienced during distant learning. We also want to share our vision with you for the future and our plans for next year. And another reason that we wanted to gather was just to get a, a, give you a chance to get to know us. Um, we have affectionately dubbed ourselves as the dream team uh, because we really enjoyed the work that we are doing as well as working with one another. Uh, we have many years, all of us working in our district, and we have been really excited with the opportunity to be creative in our program, to collaborate together, as well as this opportunity to pioneer something new in elementary school. And as Nancy Levy will explain next, we really believe that the continuation and the expansion of a program like this is imperative right now in public education. Thanks, Chris. Good evening. I am Nancy Levy. So we know our district has a history of leadership in educational reform and innovative schools and schooling. The pandemic has shown us that school does not have to look the same as it has, have to be in the same place as it was. Recently, This American Life produced an episode all about this and their conclusion, whoa, maybe school School, as we once knew it, truly is over. The walls of our schools have been taken down. And in that space, we have come together to build something new. So SOAR is our solution, our answer. So um, this is SOAR. There are new educational needs and possibilities for students and families. We are inviting you to come soar with us. This is our school name and it's our vision. So the S says that SMM USD and the state parks are partnering together to support and strengthen our instruction and our experience. O stands for online and outdoors. Our program provides blended learning and blended access. Blended means choice. Students and families can choose when and where they learn. We provide the curriculum online 
culminating in an outdoor or online place-based learning experience. A is our strong academic programs that are supported by the adventure, motivating our students throughout the year. R is reimagining education and promoting resource stewardship together. Thank you. So we feel there are many benefits to this program. Um, uh, our individual and small group daily instruction is one of those benefits. One of our takeaways from 2020 and 2021 was that having students uh, in small groups was really important in terms of engagement. Um, in our small groups, we have our students you know, with their cameras on. We have students speaking directly to each other on Zoom. Uh, students have lots of airtime and a high degree of participation. Um, we also feel that this program allows us to differentiate instruction based on the needs and interests and learning styles of students and allows us to support a wide range of student learning needs, including students with IEPs. And to add on to all the benefits Jill talked about with small groups, another great benefit is we can really focus in on student interests and passions and go deeply into students, things that students care about. Um, for instance, earlier this year, a number of my students expressed a, a big interest in animals. So we were able to do a literacy project around animals. And also because we're in the breakout rooms in these small groups, students can feel confident with their own growth and not compare themselves to their classmates who may work at a different pace. That's one of the great things about breakout rooms. Um, another thing that's been wonderful is having parents as teaching partners. And that's really been one of the most amazing things for the four of us about independent study because our parents really are our teaching partners and make this all possible. And they're able to see and learn the curriculum along with their children. And we've seen that this really gives parents confidence in their ability to support their children because they see the lessons being taught live. Um, and we find that we're more engaged than ever with parents and parents have expressed that they're able to have more access to their teachers than ever before. And along with that, we found for some students learning from home is a very positive experience. For many students, it's calmer than the classroom, quiet, distraction free, and that really works well for some students. And also with the students in the home, we feel we've really gotten to know families very well. We interact with their siblings, their pets, their stuffed animals, and students are able to share those things that are really important to their family and their identity because they're in their home. And that's been amazing. There's also a lot of flexibility in terms of the schedule to accommodate, you know, students who are busy with various activities. Um, there's opportunities for enrichment. So the teachers provide enrichment. Um, some examples from this year are, you know, afternoon writing lab, um, webinars um, live with scientists um, and state park interpreters, and many other activities, which we're going to refer to throughout this presentation. Um, and then parents can also supplement the curriculum. You know, some parents have arranged for their students to use Duolingo to explore other languages. Other students, you know, are really um, playing chess a lot and go and, you know, they have time to do that. Um, some families spend additional time cooking, making things. Um, we have a student who is really developing his skills with 3D modeling. So as parents and caregivers, you can choose to include learning experiences that fit your family. And another benefit is multi-age cooperative learning, which matches so many of the activities that Jill just talked about. Um, cooking, for example, we've been doing cooking weekly and we can have kindergarten through fifth graders cooking together in their homes. Obviously we're together online and we're doing that fractions work, which is a concept K and first graders are just being introduced to and fourth and fifth graders can uh, model solutions and how to think about fractions. So that's been really wonderful. And I'm gonna pass it over to Chris, who's gonna share um, some comments from a parent in our program. So this is a picture of a student that we currently have in fifth grade. And Miriam has said this about our program. 
Just due to its very setup, the ISP program allows for a more personalized learning approach. The ability to have a more intimate learning dynamic seems to allow the teacher to better adapt to the student's personality, temperament, learning, and comprehension aptitude. And I'm going to throw it back to Erin, and Erin's going to talk a little bit more about the schedule. So what does the day look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably a question that a lot of people are curious about. So the way our program is set up in general is students will meet with the whole class for a morning meeting, which could be anywhere from 30 minutes to one hour, depending on age. And they'll also meet with a teacher in a small group each day. The rest of the day would be spent working independently on assignments with optional grade level or multi-age activities also offered each day. Uh, here are two examples of, of student schedules. So a family may prefer to create a more formal schedule like the one on the left, which teachers would support and help them make, or a student um, would maybe work best with a schedule like the one on the right, where they could work at their own pace throughout the day. And we would work with each family to think about a, a, a schedule, an organization that works well for their family. And so what will they be doing during that time? Nancy is going to talk about our academic program. Thanks, so this slide shows our academic core. All students receive a rigorous and robust academic program. We provide opportunities for learning that fits each student and family. So the beauty of this is that lessons can be tailored to meet students' needs and interests. Uh, Place-based learning, discovery, and critical thinking can be promoted through our school and real-world involvement. To understand the impact of this, we are going to show you some of the work from our students this year. So Erin could start. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Nancy just mentioned real world involvement. So I wanted to share these projects and this feedback from a first grade parent who just talked about how important that real world learning was for her child. So we can see with Henry's project on the left and Ethan's project on the right, these were part of a larger K-1 civil rights project on, it was on civil and human rights. Um, Henry researched Fred Korematsu and the Japanese internment and Ethan was learning about Malala and girls' rights to education around the world. And these are just two examples of how we've been able to um, engage in project-based learning, incorporate the social justice standards, and really hone in on those real-world topics. Um, and of course, the amazing parent-teacher partnership really supports this type of learning because parents can work with their children to access the resources. And I also wanted to show a few more projects here. Um, here's some more examples of kindergarten and first grade work we've been able to do an independent study. So we can see the math project on the left is an example of start students learning through interests, like I mentioned before. Each student chose a question to ask and then gathered data from their classmates as we worked on the first grade data standards. And on the right, here's an example of a community building project from early in the year, a page from an All About Me book. And second through fifth graders have also been working on amazing projects and lessons with a lot of student choice and voice. And Nancy is going to share some of those projects. Sure, thanks. So this is the second and third grade work samples. Um, the curriculum and grade level standards are taught with district programs using both online and physical materials. We are able to present contact to content to students in so many ways and we can work with families to find the methods that best fit each student's learning or interests, needs and styles. So it really is truly student-centered education. Chris is gonna show us what this looks like in fourth and fifth grades. Thank you, Nancy. So you heard me mention earlier just about this chance to be creative. And, um, you know, we've been able to be creative obviously with the technology as you would anticipate, right? Creating Flipgrid videos, using Google Classroom and Seesaw, publishing programs, webinars, uh, virtual field trips, but we've also been able to be creative with the curriculum. Um, you might think that a lot of the work is online, but you can see from the student samples that, you know, we have a lot of work where kids are writing and then sharing and showing it with us. Um, in fourth grade, one of the 
big areas that we study in the social studies curriculum is the history of California. And of course, we do talk about westward expansion. And students were able to direct their learning with a project about this in the upper left corner. You can see a young gentleman is holding up his diary and he was portraying a 12 year old who was on the Oregon Trail. But below that in the left middle, um, one of our students decided that she wanted to portray a 12 year old girl who was from one of the indigenous tribes that the Oregon Trail would have gone through. Um, Jill's also gonna talk about the unique way that this platform can help us meet student needs individually. Thanks, Chris. Yes, um, one of the ways that we can differentiate is by um, just pushing out slightly different assignments to different students based on their need or interest. Um, and we can also make major adjustments. And so we get really excited about that because um, we think it's a really great way to um, you know, meet the needs of different students. Um, another one of my favorite things that, um, that I get to do is you know, work with students in math. And um, on the top right, um, you'll see you know, two students had solved the same math problem on their whiteboards. And they did that um, before they came to session. And then they took turns holding up their whiteboard and showing each other how they had solved the problem. And I mean, it really feels like they're just looking directly at each other and sharing their math work. And then you know, they give each other feedback around each other's ideas. And, you know, we know that um, when, student, um, when students interact with each other's ideas in any subject, that their achievement increases, their understanding increases. So we get really excited about opportunities to have them share and give each other feedback. And you may think that, you know, in this kind of platform that the program might be kind of isolating and that the students might be working, you know, alone most of the day. But Nancy's going to share, you know, some of the ways that we have been building community this year in ISP. Thank you. Well, right from the beginning, we worked really hard this year to develop school spirit and community. Uh, we even have our own cheer. So, at our winter show, we celebrated and we came together as a community. This is us showcasing our students' talents and interests. Our families really feel connected to one another. And we wanna center this at our new school with its own name and identity and place. Um, another example is the poetry workshop. This was multi-age community connected learning and gathering experience. Jill will tell us. Yeah, so the poetry, um, we had a um, for, we had the former city of Malibu poet laureate Ricardo Means Ibarra, and he came to the second, third, fourth, and fifth grade students, and he came for four live sessions on Zoom and led poetry writing sessions. And I mean, there was a high degree of excitement and engagement during these sessions. Um, and then we culminated with a poetry slam where students and parents and grandparents from around the world joined us on Zoom to hear students publicly present the products of their learning experiences. And then the students also had the opportunity to have their poem included in an anthology, and then they're going to receive a copy of the book. This is our um, whole school e-newspaper. And this is another way that, to offer differentiation and connection and choice. So students are all invited to come to Newspaper Club to research and write articles for the school paper. Then they can go out to the community or just to other classes in the school and report back. Again, strengthening student skills and those multi-age connections. A similar student selected activity are the feature articles in fifth grade. So this was a really robust individual research project. And you've heard this word about student choice happening a lot uh, throughout the webinar. And this was another one where students had a choice and they had a choice either in the, top, in the topic. So presenting something that they felt they were an expert on but maybe still wanted to learn more about. And then they also had a choice in how they were going to you know, publicly present this information. And um, they had a choice in maybe doing it whole class or in their small groups or even coming during office hours to voice record themselves for their presentation. 
But then what we did is we took these articles and we went out to the larger ISP community um, and we shared with our little buddies. So the fourth and fifth graders all are matched up with the K through three um, classes. And what they did is they read their feature article to their little buddy. And then some of our fifth graders even designed an online game that they could play with their buddies after they had shared the articles. And Jill is going to talk about our plans for the coming year. We're really excited to continue doing all the things we've been doing, but also um, extending learning experiences to include occasional, optional, in-person experiences. And we have two types of experiences that we want to tell you about. So one type is designed to take place in an ISP classroom. For example, after a science lesson that takes place remotely on Zoom, students come to the ISP classroom and do an experiment in a small group and further explore the topic. So that's one type of um, experience that we're excited about adding. And now Nancy's gonna talk about the other type of experience. Thanks. Well, something that worked really well this year was getting outside to focus on some place-based learning. And the state park system has an educational arm and they're excited to strengthen their program with us. It's been really motivating to work toward an experience and we can make it available to all students, both online and outdoors, whatever fits your family, it's blended access. So we're collaborating with the California State Parks Ports Program. Um, we've already been meeting with their leadership to plan this and we're going to attend a summer symposium to plan out our year of coordinating trips around the curriculum standards. We plan to focus about one park a month next year. Um, so you can see we, on the next slide, we have some of our experiences from this year, which again, we hope to expand next year. These are pictures from our in-person park visits. And there's also a picture there of um, the blended access. So our, our interpreter with their, um, iPad talking to the Zoom kids too. So everybody's involved. Place-based learning gives us experiences that are together, meaningful learning, and uses our public lands to connect with each other and our environment. And this, show, this slide um, shows our hopes and our dreams for the future of the program. Uh, because we are a new program, a new school, uh, we have a vision for the work that we will do to build our program in the coming years. So you can see and you've heard about this um, school identity that we're creating. Uh, we are, even though we have this strong family school connection that you heard Erin describe, uh, we're committed to even growing that more and in a deeper way. Where we are working on a school parent ha handbook. Um, you also have heard us mention the online programs that we're using currently, but we're committed to finding state of the art programs um, and you know, searching those out. So that way then our students have some inter integrated technology. Uh, and you've heard about the differences that we're going to offer online and in person. But the other thing that we're working on is making sure that all the SMMUSD supported programs that are available for students in a building are also available for the students that are online in independent study. So we hope that you have gotten a glimpse during this webinar of what our program offers, what it's going to look like next year, and just a sense of the four of us as teachers. Uh, we are a pretty knowledgeable team, and one of the really exciting and great things about um, our team is that we have different strengths that in a wide variety of areas. And um, we were joking, if we were to list all of the district initiatives that have been offered over the past 30 years, we realized that between the four of us, we have been to many, if not most of them. So please know that when you join our independent study program with our vision and your commitment and your partnership that we will soar together. Thank you very much for attending the webinar. Uh, we appreciate your interest. And we are hoping that if there are questions, right, that you've been able to type those in the chat. And the other thing that we want to leave you with is just a way to reach us. So, Erin, um, if you're able to, you might be able to put into the chat our emails. Yeah, I'm not sure if the chat is working. 
Well, everyone, if you have a paper or pencil and you want to just kind of write down uh, quickly our emails, uh, Mr. Burgess email you can get off of the SMMUSD website. Uh, my email is C Cullen, and all of us, the ending will be at smmusd.org. Jill Matthews will be J Matthews. And Nancy Levy will be N Levy at smmusd.org. And then Aaron E. Handout at smmusd.org. Again, thank you very much for attending. We appreciate your interest and we look forward to hearing from you.